In this video, we're talking about what do computer engineers do and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees and welcome back to the 1% Engineer Show where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. There's plenty of great links in the description below, including a Discord server of ours with 1,000 engineers, a 1% Engineer Kit, access to our Instagram page, and we're doing remote internships for 2021. If you wanna be on the waiting list, you can find the link and apply. What type of engineer do you wanna be? What videos should we be making in 2021? comment below. Computer engineers work in the intersection of electrical and electronics engineering with computer science. Computer engineers are usually educated in electrical and electronics engineering, software design, and especially software hardware integration instead of, for example, only software like a computer science major or only electronics and electrical engineering like the IEEE field. Hardware and software aspects of the career include designing microcontrollers, microprocessors, personal computers, supercomputers, and circuit design. Computer engineers focus not only on how the computer systems work themselves, but the integration of their work into the bigger technological landscape in the world. Now let's talk about computer engineering tasks. Computer engineers may work on various tasks, and this could include writing software and firmware for embedded microcontrollers, designing very large scale integration chips, designing analog sensors, mixed signal circuit boards, and designing operating systems. Computer engineers are also suited for robotics research. Most of you are interested in this get so many questions about robotics which relies heavily on using digital systems to control and monitor electrical systems like motors communications and sensors all engineering disciplines are quite broad and you have subfields and subdisciplines within the major computer engineering may be more vast than others and so it's not uncommon to go incredibly in-depth within computer engineering with whatever niche that you choose we'll talk about the subfields later in this video but first I think it's very important to talk about the history of each engineering type we do this in every video and computer engineering's history is very interesting. Understanding the history also helps you understand that really computer engineering is a deep aspect within electrical engineering. I really do believe that. In fact, many programs offer electrical and computer engineering together. I've had multiple friends at different universities be able to take only a few extra classes and be able to walk away with a double major in electrical and computer engineering. I'm not suggesting that that's important or you should do that, but I'm making an example of how close the fields are. When you look at the history, here it also is revealing of this. The first computer was developed in 1939 by a physics and math professor at Iowa State College, now Iowa State University, named John Vincent Atanasoff and his former graduate Clifford Berry. Both men were electrical engineering undergraduates and had master's degrees in math and physics respectively and then Professor Atanasoff got his PhD in theoretical physics. They called the computer the ABC, the Atanasoff Berry computer, which is very cool that the professor would include his former student in in the naming of that computer and give him credit and authority for the rest of his career. It took five years to complete this computer and nearly 60 years later, a replica of the ABC was constructed and it took an entire team of engineers four years and $350,000 to complete this. If you reverse calculate for inflation, that means it would have been $6.4 million of expenses to build this computer in 1939. It's unbelievable that these two were able to do this. Fast forward into the computer engineering industry and transistors were developed in 1947, integrated circuits in 1959, and then larger breakthroughs didn't emerge to the 1970s when semiconductor technology was on the rise and also the single chip microprocessor was developed by Intel in 1971. Okay, with that brief history, I wanna point out that there's two distinct branches within computer engineering. You have computer hardware engineering and computer software engineering. There are 71,000 computer hardware engineers in America, which shows that it's a really decent sized field. And as you know, our world is moving forward much faster faster in the software environments than in the hardware environments. And if you go ahead and take a look at the software development industry, there's 1.4 million people in America working within that industry. Not all of them are engineers, not all of them are four-year computer scientists or data scientists or software engineers, but there are so many more opportunities and positions on the software side than in the hardware side for computer engineering. This shows you that even if you are in love with the hardware side and you want to work with circuitry design and microprocessors, you absolutely absolutely need to be interested in and want to have a career that's embedded within software development or you will get left behind. So make sure you understand this. If you're far more into hardware, mechanical engineering could be the way for you or mechatronic 
electronics engineering that uses more of an integration between mechanical and electrical. We have videos on what do mechanical, what do electrical, and what do mechatronics engineers do. Make sure you check those out as well. All right, let's move on into the various subfields within computer engineering so you can understand which niche you should go down and become an expert in one of these sub-disciplines. The first is processor design. Processor design involves choosing an instruction set in a certain execution paradigm and results in a micro architecture. CPU design is divided into design of the following components. Data paths, control units, memory components such as register files, caches, clock circuitry, such as clock drivers, and so on. Coding, cryptology, and information protection. These engineers develop new methods for protecting various information, such as digital images and music, fragmentation, copyright infringement, and other copyright infringement and other forms of tampering. Communications and wireless networks. These engineers work on advancements in telecommunication systems and networks, especially wireless networks, modulation and error control coding, and information theory. High-speed network design, interface suppression and modulation, design and analysis of fault-tolerant systems, and storage and transmission schemes are also a part of this speciality. Compilers and operating systems. Engineers in this field develop new operating system architecture, program analysis techniques, and new techniques to sure quality. Computational science and engineering. Computational methods are applied to formulate and solve complex mathematical problems in engineering in the physical and social sciences. Examples include aircraft design, the plasma processing of nanometer features on semiconductor wafers, circuit design, radar detection systems, and more. Computer networks, mobile computing, and distributed systems. Engineers build integrated environments for computing, communications, and information access. Examples include shared channel wireless networks, adaptive resource management in various systems, and improving the quality of service in mobile and ATM environments. Computer systems, which includes architecture, computer processing, and dependability. This includes research projects that allow for reliable, secure, and high-performance computer systems. Projects such as designing processors for multi-threaded and parallel processing are included in this field. Other examples of work in this field include the development of new theories, algorithms, and other tools that add performance to computer systems. Computer vision and robotics. In this speciality, computer engineers focus on developing visual sensing technology to sense an environment, representation of an environment, and a manipulation of that environment. The gathered three-dimensional information is then implemented to perform a variety of tasks. These include improved human modeling, image communication, and human-computer interfaces, as well as devices such as special special purpose cameras with versatile vision sensors. Embedded systems. Individuals working in this area design technology for enhancing the speed, reliability, and performance of systems. Embedded systems are found in many devices, such as small FM radios to space shuttles. Ongoing developments in embedded systems include automated vehicles and equipment to conduct research and rescue, automated transportation systems, and human-robot coordination to repair equipment in space. Integrated circuits, very large system integration design, testing, and computer-aided drafting. Engineers working in this area work on enhancing the speed, reliability, and energy efficiency of next-generation, very large-scale integrated systems. System circuits and microsystems. An example of this speciality is work done on reducing the power consumption of very large system integration algorithms and architecture. Signal image and speech processing. These engineers develop improvements in human-computer interaction, including speech recognition and synthesis, medical and scientific imaging, or communication systems. Other work in this area includes computer vision such as human facial recognition systems. The last field, and maybe even the one with the most exciting future, is quantum computing. Quantum computing involves people working with quantum phenomena, such as superposition and entanglement to perform computation. Quantum engineers work on quantum computers, which are believed to be able to solve computational problems such as integer factorization, which includes RSA encryption, substantially faster than classic computers. The study of quantum computing is a subfield of quantum information science. All right, now that you understand those 12 subfields within computer engineering, let's talk really quickly about the work environment for computer engineers. Computer engineers, like most engineering roles, it's considered a white collar job where you may work in a typical well-lit office with comfortable surroundings or in a computer laboratory. If you're on the hardware side, you may be on more of the testing and implementation of systems. But again, most engineers who get a four-year degree and go into an industry, go into corporate engineering, will work in an office, and it's a pretty typical environment. Finally, let's talk about the professional engineer. Only 34 engineers sat for the computer engineering 
professional engineering exam last fall in 2019 and they're moving the computer engineering exam to now just once a year because essentially no one takes it. I was doing a review of the website that shows how many people sit for the exam every six months and unless you're a civil engineer, unless you're working in power and unless you're working in HVAC for mechanical engineering, basically there's only a few people in every single engineering discipline who get the PE and that's probably because they just want the letters behind their names so they can move up in management and be a leader and it's more of a credential than giving them some sort of design authority or career options. So you can take the FE as a computer engineer in your undergraduate, which is an eight hour fundamentals of engineering exam, but you don't really have to. Comment below if you wanna be a computer engineer, if you're having trouble between computer electrical and computer science, I see this dilemma quite a bit online. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you're a young engineer and you wanna to rise to the top 1% of your career, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. We have over 130 episodes on this channel for your engineering success so make sure you see more of those. Follow the links below for access to the remote internship, our Discord server with 1,000 engineers, the Instagram page, which we're trying to get to 500 before the end of the year. Thanks again for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys, and we'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.